Hey everybody, this is Chris from Booster Barbecue. Today we're going to do a short video on the Z-Grill 700E pellet smoker. Uh, just got my hands on this thing, so I'm really excited to try it out. You know, it looks really great. Uh, I want to kick the tires on it, see what features it has, and, and see how she cooks. So uh, I figure we'll try a recipe today and um, see what happens. So this is the set, the Z-Grill 700E pellet cooker. As you can see, the lid and uh, the lid of the pellet hopper are stainless steel, so it gives it a really nice look. Uh, makes it a little durable, it's not going to rust. Uh, over on the pellet hopper, that thing is a 20 pound, has a 20 pound capacity. So it's one of the biggest in the market. You can dump an entire bag in there and not have to babysit your pellets uh, and not have to worry about running out. You have your cabinets there on the bottom. Plenty of space for where you, you want to put spare pellets, you want to put your tools, any buckets. Uh, they're right there. There's your controller pretty standard controller there. You have an, an entrance with a grommet for your probes so it keeps uh, too much heat from escaping. You see the rubber seal in there. If we open her up, we have over 700 square inches of cooking space. Uh, I have some probes in there I just ran. We're not going to need them for this cook uh, because it's, it's a pretty quick cook. We're going to go uh, about 400 degrees for 25-30 minutes. But as you can see, plenty of space in there. Looks like you could probably get four butts. And depending on how you do your ribs, if you lay them flat, if you put them in a rack, you get anywhere from, oh, I'd say two to four, or even, maybe even six on the racks, uh, on, this, on the stand-up vertical racks. So when I'm filling up my pellet cookers, I dump my pellets into a food-grade five-gallon bucket and then I scoop them out with a cat litter scooper. Uh, of course, it's an unused cat litter scooper, that's the key. Uh, that would really affect some of the flavor, I think, if you went otherwise. But I find it's helpful where you scoop it, you can give it a little shake, and any potential, you know, any of the dust that comes out of the bag is gonna fall out, and you don't have to worry about that getting in your cooker and uh, getting all up in the auger and that sort of thing. All right, so I have uh, a mix of lumberjack char hickory and lumberjack cherry pellets for this cook. As you can see, this hopper is huge, not even close to being filled up, but we don't need a whole bunch for our cook today. Um, go ahead and close that lid down. You can see, it's pretty sizable right there. You can put whatever you need to on there. So in my experience, the best way to fire up a pellet cooker is after you turn it on, we're going to set the z to smoke. We're going to let it roll again. We're going to, we're going to let it roll. We're going to give the auger an opportunity to fill up the pellets, push them into the burn pot, make it ignite a little bit. I like to open the lid of the cook chamber and then just wait until you see some smoke. So you can verify ignition. You can get a lot of oxygen down in that fire and let it get going where it needs to go. This typically takes probably about two minutes, but uh, I'm sure it varies based on the model. So it's been about two minutes. You can see the smoke starting to roll out of the Z-Grill. Uh, that's, that's exactly how I would expect it to go. Uh, so we have good combustion. Everything's running great. Uh, I think we're going to be in for a good cook. So at this point, I will basically close the cook chamber. Crank up to the temperature that we want to cook at. I'm going to let this guy go up to about 350 um, for our recipe today. You, you want to go under temp rather than overshoot, so we're going to want to go a little higher, but uh, it's a little windy out, it's a little cold out today, so we want to see how she reacts to the temperature. Um, but it's easier to go low and, and bump it up a little bit than overshoot and get her back down, so typically on most cookers. So uh, we're going to let it run, we're going to let it smoke, and we'll go inside and start prepping uh, the recipe. So it looks like we're up to temp. I came out here and bumped the Z-Grill up to uh, 375. 
as you can see, the controller is running 382. So on a, a pretty cold fall day, that's pretty precise. I mean, it's uh, it's not too far off, and, and we're barely above 30 degrees out here. So I think that's uh, that's pretty tight control. If you ask me. Okay. So we're gonna squeeze our cornbread mixture out of this corner. And kind of lock that off. It's a little bigger than I would have wanted. And then we're gonna pipe this in to the pan and we're gonna fill it up about halfway. Leave it some room to rise. So this thing is ready to go. We're at 372. Flux went between 371 and 372. We have it set at 375. We're gonna go ahead and put this cornbread in, get some uh, wood smoked cornbread, and it should cook about 25 to 30 minutes. Since this is such a quick cook, I'm not gonna need my probes or any of my temperature monitoring equipment. We're just going to let it roll and I'll come check on it in about 20 minutes or so. So we're running out of daylight here. Just want to take a look, see how she's going. Still running pretty close to our set 10. We have about 10 more minutes left on the cornbread. Just want to check the time in about 10 minutes or so. We'll open her up and we'll toothpick it and see how it's going. Big test. Put it right down in there. Comes up. Dry. So these things are done. So I'm really impressed with how this uh, Z Grill 700E performed on this cook. To be able to bake something like cornbread uh, outside on a, on a cooker requires a level of precision that traditional barbecue doesn't really need. So. I'm very impressed with the, being able to hit the target temp that we wanted to and being able to stay there for the duration of the cook. Um, you know, the precision of the digital controller, the size of the hopper, the, the cabinet underneath, um, those little things really kind of set this cooker apart from some of the other things you might find in the big box stores. Um, so that's the video for today. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you'll follow us on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We intend to start pumping out these videos as we cook uh, and hopefully they'll get bigger and better. I'll put the entire recipe down in the notes and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.